give him a hand clap. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Tim, as always. Great job. And again, you just you just preach my message, and then I get to get up here and just do a little anecdotal things, and that's it. It works. Praise the Lord. God is good. And uh, Suzanne and Peter and Jody, thank you for leading us in worship. Mike and Suzanne, as always, thank you for all that you're doing behind the scenes as well as in, out in front. And uh, all of you that are on Facebook and live streaming, God bless you. We appreciate you being with us this morning and hope that you're being blessed wherever you are and uh, believing that God's going to give you a great new year with all of the promises of God being manifest in Jesus' name. Praise God. God is good. Happy 2021. I heard somebody say the other day that Fortunately, for the first time, it will really be true that hindsight will be 2020. Praise the Lord. So, praise God. You know, I love being married. Uh, it's you know, it's it's great to find that special person that you want to annoy for the rest of your life. Just smile on that face over there, because she knows it's true. <laughs> praise God. Oh yeah. Well, I want my kids to have all the things that I couldn't afford, and then I want to move in with them. <laughs> you know, uh, common sense is like deodorant. People who need it most never use it. <laughs> some of you may not know this. Well, my, my dad had a furniture store and a gas station and some stuff, and businesses that he ran. But years ago, I, you may not know this, but I used to sell furniture too. Trouble was, it was my own. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Apparently, none of you have been there. <laughs> okay, God is good. Now, let's just get to the Word of God this morning. I want to start with John chapter 16 and verse 13. John 16 and 13, Peter. Praise God. I'm excited about this year. It's, it's, there's always some anticipation with any new year, as, as we all know. But I really do believe that God is moving, and we're going to see some of the most miraculous things we've ever seen in our entire lives. And this is just the beginning of what God is doing. Praise God. So in John 16, 13, he says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Praise the Lord. John 3, verses 3 through 8. John 3, 3 through 8. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. The wind blows where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. Praise God. Romans 10, 8 through 11. Thank you, Jesus. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. If thou canst, shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Uh, it's interesting that that very scripture is telling us how we are to live our lives as Christians. With the heart we believe, and with the mouth we confess. It begins that way in salvation, and our entire Christian life then is supposed to operate from that same principle. And um, there's a, 
a movie that was out years, several years ago with uh, Bruce, um, can't think of his last name now, Bruce Willis, yeah. And uh, he was a psychiatrist, and the movie went on for the whole movie, and you don't realize until, yeah. unless you're a lot smarter than me, which is quite possible, that he's actually dead. And the boy ha has a sensitive spirit to spirits, to, to demonic and uh, otherwise. And the boy says something that has just resonated with me ever since, and that is he said, I see dead people everywhere. Well, so do we. We just don't know it. Because if they're not born again, Tim talked about it, Don talked about it, Suzanne, everybody that shared this morning, uh, Eric, Look, when, when Adam and Eve sinned, and I'll get to this at some point probably here, but God said, the day you do this, you're going to die. Now, Satan said, oh, you surely won't die. You know, he's just saying that. Well, on the one hand, they didn't. Physically, they did not die. But spiritually, they did. God breathed into them, Tim said. He breathed into them the breath of life. Yeah. God life, spirit life is what happened. Their spirit came alive. When they disobeyed God or refused to honor His word or believe His word, their spirit died. Physically, they were still alive, but spiritually, they were cut off. Every man that's been born since that day has been born with a dead spirit. And it's not until Jesus tells Nicodemus, you've got to be born again because it's the only way you can connect again with God. Right. Because your physical life is not what God's really interested in. I mean, He takes care of us. He provides for us. But it's our spirit life that He, that he connects with. God is a spirit. And it's His spirit that He's given us that gives us true life, real life, what life is really all about. And the sad thing is the vast majority of people, they don't know they're dead. They don't, know, they don't have any idea of what the possibilities are for them if they were to receive God. Instead of that, they mock God. They ridicule anybody who does believe, not knowing that they're the idiot. They're the one who is dead. They're dead people walking. They're just waiting for the flesh to drop over, and then they're done completely. They're, they're cut off from God forever. So when Jesus talked about the spirit of truth that would come, he said, he will guide you into all truth. He will teach you things to come. Have you ever, you know, you, we have conversations with unbelievers and you talk to them about the script and it's like you're reading Mark Twain to them or something or, or, or even less than that because they don't see any sense at all to what we're saying. They, they get nothing about it. Why? Because they're spiritually dead. Yeah. Right? Unless they get quickened by the Holy Spirit, they, it's impossible for them to receive the things of God. Yes, right. So the spirit of truth or the spirit of Christ is, is also called is going to teach you and guide you. In other words, He's going to enlighten you. Right? He's going to give you revelation. The, the Holy Spirit lives, or the Holy Spirit dwells in the human spirit. And as believers, yep. He dwells within our spirit. Yep. Amen? So the human spirit is capable of receiving all of the things of God. And that's how they have to be received before they can be manifest. They have to be received by faith first and foremost. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verses 7 through 9, Peter. 1 Corinthians 2, 7 through 9. And I'm just, what I'm talking about is what I feel like God is saying to us for this year, for our lives, period. But especially in this upcoming year. Because, you know, there's so many Christians, myself included at times, who live as though we're not even born again. And I don't mean that we're out necessarily doing really horrible, sinful things. We're just not tuning into the Holy Spirit. We're just not tapping into what God is trying to share with us. We get so caught up in the things that are going on around us and the things that we're seeing and hearing and feeling that we, that we kind of push back or, or, or refuse to allow the Holy Spirit to touch us, to speak to us, to move on, uh, on us. And, and that's the only way we can really be successful in this world. Amen? And so uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 7 says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Now he's talking about Christians. And he said, Which none of the princes of this world knew, for if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it, as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them who love him. So religion says, 
See, nobody knows what God's doing. Nobody knows what God's going to do. Nobody knows what God's thinking or, or wanting to be involved in. But we do have access to that knowledge in verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So what the Spirit searches, what, what Spirit is it that's searching all these things? In the King James, that word Spirit, if you look in your Bible, it's capitalized. So it would cause you to think or, or lead one to believe that he's talking about the Holy Spirit. But Paul isn't referring to the Holy Spirit in the original or in the uh, Hebrew, Greek, English, in linear Bible that I've got, it's not capitalized. And so I believe he's referring to the human spirit. Mm -hmm. And so I ask this question. If it's the other way around, why would the Holy Spirit need to search the things of God? Yeah. The Holy Spirit already knows the things of God. It is God. Yeah. It's the human spirit that searches the things of God. So none of us can really be complete in life unless our spirit is in tune with God's spirit. Because that's where the truth is. That's where reality actually exists. The human spirit is always in search of fulfillment. It's always in search of happiness or, or something to satisfy it, to make it complete, to make it be what it should be. Amen? And that only comes by being one or in sync with the Father, the Holy Spirit. That's the only way we can ever be truly Satisfied. It's the only way we can ever be truly happy. Right? I mean, the world does this too. That's why they're into meditation and all the other yogas and everything else that goes on. They're looking for the same thing. That is, they're just spiritually dead. So they can't grasp that or they can't receive it. So they look for alternatives. And of course, then that leads to drugs and alcohol and sexual promiscuity. You know, you name it. it just anything and everything trying to find something that will make me feel right. worthwhile or right. make my life seem like it's meaningful or has worth of some type. So look again, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9. As it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. So that sounds like a contradiction, right? Because the very next verse, verse 10 says, but God has revealed them to us by his spirit. It did enter into the heart, but it came by the Holy Spirit to the human spirit. God enlightens us through our human spirit. So there's no contradiction here because it didn't come by intellect or sense knowledge, but by the revelation of the heart or the spirit. Amen. Verse 13, 1 Corinthians 2, 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So we're speaking these same truths, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual with spiritual. So first, he reveals the fact that the natural eye has not seen, right? The natural ear has not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man, through the five senses. Yeah. And that's what happened with Adam. When his spirit died, he was totally, totally committed and totally uh, dependent on the five senses because he didn't have anything else. And God said, that's what God tells him. He said, now by the sweat of your brow or by your physical effort, you're going to have to make a living. You're going to have to survive through your own instincts, through your own abilities, through your own five senses, right? So it didn't come by seeing. This knowledge doesn't come by hearing, doesn't come by smelling, it doesn't come by tasting, it doesn't come by feeling. God reveals it to us by His Spirit to our human spirit. And that's why there seems to be this gulf or this, you know, gaping space between us and unbelievers. Because they're, we're operating by two different values. And I'm not talking about morality as much as I am the spirit or the flesh. The spirit or the five senses. Look, I, we were talking after church last week, Mike, Suzanne, and us. I think Ron was here for a while. And we were, we were talking about, you know, we all, all of us, it happens to us. You'll walk into a, a store. You'll walk into a, somebody's home or a, a business of some kind. And you get this weird, you know, it's just like, boy, something's not right here. 
right? We've all done this. We're around somebody and it's like something, it's uncomfortable, you know? Your spirit kind of draws up in a knot and you're trying to think out, what, what is this, you know? Or you come into a room and you're thinking something's wrong here. This, this isn't right, you know? And God is enlightening you. He's saying, be careful. Listen to that inner voice. Don't jump to conclusions. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to ridicule or judge or anything else. Just keep your eyes and your ears open, spiritually speaking, because there's something flaky going on here and you don't want to be part of it. Or maybe there's something you can do to rectify it or to help it, right? So the spirit of man, in, in Proverbs 24, I don't remember the verse, but it says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts. So you say, well, Nathan, I, I mean, I don't understand how my spirit can do that. Good news. You don't have to understand it. Amen. We are, as Christians, able to know things beyond the natural mind and natural understanding. We can be in the right place at the right time when we're enlightened by the spirit. It happens to us all the time. You know, well, gee, that was lucky. No, you operated by the spirit. Not based on what you knew, but you, it's almost like an instinct or sometimes a, an urge and you just do it or you say it and you find out well, that was the Lord. So you have to get your mouth into agreement with God. And we do that by confessing. Everything I do prospers. Yes. No weapon formed against me can prosper. Right. Look at Romans. Let's look at this in Romans chapter 10. Verses 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And as I said before, that's how everything works in the kingdom of God. That's how we enter the kingdom, and that's how we survive in the kingdom. That's how the kingdom operates. See, you can be in the kingdom and not get the benefit of the kingdom. Because if you don't operate by kingdom rules or values, you don't get the benefit from it. And how do we operate in those values? By Believing what the Word of God says and confessing it, regardless of what our senses are telling us, regardless of what we're feeling or seeing or hearing. Amen? Look, uh, Psalms 112, verse 4. Under the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous unto the upright that's us he has made us upright he has made us the righteousness of God in Christ unto us there ariseth light in the darkness he is gracious full of compassion and righteous well folks I think that we all realize the world's getting darker every day but that's not something that should be discouraging to us for light shall rise in us, even in the midst of darkness. Praise the Lord. Some people are saying, how, how in the world do you think you're, you're going to have so much light when everyone else around us is in darkness and don't even know it? God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, no matter how dark it gets. I'm not being negative, and I'm not trying for sure to create fear. But things in the world are not going to get better. Good news is, we're coming closer to the kingdom of light. But unbelievers, they see the world getting closer to the kingdom of darkness. Their darkness grows darker because their lamp has been put out. And we wonder why we have trouble communicating, how we have trouble dialoguing, how political parties can't get together. Because this thing is not about the natural. This is about spiritual yes. warfare yes. It is. on every level. Yes. When Adam was created, his candle was burning. 
God breathed into him the breath of life. He enlightened him. But when he sinned, when he failed to believe God's word, his candle went out. From then on, he was ruled by his five senses. You could say, and I would, his spirit man died. Genesis 2 and verse 17. I'll read verse 7 here. Just The Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living spirit. It says living soul, but it's, the actual translation is living spirit. So Tim touched on this too, that when God created man, he breathed his spirit into that man and made him a living spirit. Not just flesh and blood, but a living spirit that just happened to have a body to make him legal here on this planet. All right, then in verse 17, he goes on to say, you can have everything here. It's all yours. Mm -hmm. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Why? Because they were innocent. They, they weren't guiltless uh, in terms of behaviors or anything. They were innocent because they had yes. God's spirit. God saw them as innocent. There wasn't any law. There weren't any rules. There weren't any regulations. And that's why he said, don't eat from the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. That'll give you a guilty conscience. Now you're going to be conscious of everything that you do that is not perfect. Up until then, they had no idea about that. So of uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Well, either something died or else God was lying. Well, we know it wasn't physical death because they lived to be, you know, another thousand years or something. Yeah. But as far as their spirit was concerned, they were done. Yeah. And every bit of offspring that came from them, which is everybody on this planet, they've been born dead spiritually. Yeah. Praise the Lord. First Corinthians 2 and 12. Let's go back there again for a minute. See, Adam and Eve were doing things what we would call in the natural instinctively. But in fact, what they were doing, they were doing it by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. God tells him, name all the animals. Now, come on. He'd never seen an animal. He'd never seen these animals, right? And God says, name them. How did he, he did it by the Spirit. He just trusted that what he was saying was what God wanted him to say, and it was. It's, it's the way it worked. Everything operated that way. So now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So what spirit did we receive? The Holy Spirit. It made our human spirit come alive. In other words, Scripture says He quickens us, or He makes our spirit alive again, so that we can re relate to God, so that we can interact with God, so that we can believe God. Which makes us look so weird to unbelievers because they're thinking, what is this pie in the sky stuff? What are these, uh, what, whose Kool-Aid are you drinking, guys? I mean, come on. It's because they have no spiritual life in them that can connect with God and receive the things of God. Right. Amen. And so he's telling us God has given us his spirit. Why? Why did, why did he give us his spirit? So that we can know the things that are freely given to us by God and not have to walk in darkness or by the sense realm. We're in the world, so we operate that way to some degree. We have to because we're here. But we're not of the world. Our, the way we function is not supposed to be, you know, monitored or managed by this world. It's from the heavenly. We've been born from above. Praise the Lord. So we can know the things that are freely given to us. We don't have to say, I hath not seen, or ear hath not heard, or no one knows what God's doing. Because we do know what is going on. We, he has revealed it to us by His Spirit into our human spirit. Right. Amen. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and their life. That's why they resonate with a person who's a believer, because their spirit is quickened by this. Right. Where the unbeliever reads it, and it's just words on a page. It doesn't mean anything. It's, it might as well be a fairy tale, or it could be anything. It's just gibberish. Why? Because these things are discerned by the spirit and not by the intellect. 
You can go to universities all over this country and around the world for that matter and enroll in a theology class and get all kinds of information, but not one lick of spirit. No, nothing, amen, that would really identify you with God. It's just a bunch of rules and moral uh, causes to be forwarded. Yep. And it's, it's why there's this great gulf. Yep. Right? I mean, it's like Lazarus and the rich man. He said, I... I, I, I can't send him to tell your brothers there's this great gulf between you and it can't be passed you can't come over here and he's not going there that's the way it is even in the world there's this great gulf and although we don't see it naturally we certainly sense it when we're in situations with people that are non-believers and you're thinking you feel sad for him on the one hand and angry on the other yeah. like come on get a clue man wake up there's so much going on here that you're just totally unaware of and we look at politicians and the decisions that they're making and we think my god what are they think they're not thinking spiritually no. now they can they can verbalize some spiritual truth just because they've heard it yeah. and they know that that will satisfy a certain group that will then vote for them yeah. even though they have no clue what they're talking about so I'm not worried. I'm not worried about Democrats or Republicans. I'm not worried about black and white. I'm, I'm worried about the spirit of God being resident in our lives. That's what makes us victorious. That's what gives us the victory. And that's what brings God into our culture, into our world, into our lives, into our families. Yes, that is right. Praise the Lord. Yes. So uh, 1 Corinthians 2, uh, 12 and 13. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 and 13. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual with spiritual. So Paul's talking about the human spirit because that's the spiritual part of man. The physical body has absolutely no spirituality in it whatsoever. It's flesh. Right. Amen? The truth starts in our human spirit, and it changes from the inside out. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it, you can give people all the rules in the world, but it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Because this is a spiritual thing. And until we stop trying to force people to do certain things and act a certain way and behave a certain, don't do this and don't do that, we're missing the whole point. Because yeah. that will not work. There's, there's plenty of self-help programs out here all over the place. Psychiatrists, sociologists, psych psychologists, all of, it's all out there. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying if it isn't based on a biblical truth, then it's just a, a, it's a paint job. It's lipstick on a pig, as they used to say. It's not going to change what that person is. It can help them look a little better to others yeah. and maybe be accepted a little better, but it doesn't change anything. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness to him. We know that. We've been talking about it. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned, and his spirit is dead. So there's no way for him to discern it. Here's the deal. The natural man, your physical body and mind doesn't know all about you. Right? I mean, that's the reason for meditation. That's the reason for, you know, psychiatric, uh, you know, delving into your subconscious and all of those kinds of things, right? So, yeah, hey, John, it was the 60s, man. Right? We were trying to find something that we had no way to find. We were trying to do it through the senses. So you could just get a little higher, you might tap into something here. The problem is what you're tapping into is you, and you don't know you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The difference is God's spirit and our spirit know everything about us. Everything. Yeah. Go back to verse 11 there. Still 1 Corinthians 2. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of the man which is in him. So you can't know yourself except by the spirit. 
Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. So the human spirit knows all about you. And the Spirit of God knows all about God. So when we bring the two together, this is what God did in giving us His Spirit and quickening our spirit, making it alive. We bring those two spirits together and we have tapped the source of all knowledge yeah. of all there is, yeah. which is God, who knows the end from the beginning yeah. and everything in between. In other words, you, you, your candle is lit. Yes. The light is turned on in your spirit. First yes. Corinthians 2.15 again. I'm telling you what we already have. I'm not telling you how, we're, you know, there's eight steps to this. It's already done. Jesus yes. already did it all. It's for us to tune in, for us yes. to wake up and start being motivated by the Spirit rather than by the senses. Yes. And you can see in this world, everything is about the senses. I mean, they bombard you with propaganda and new, they call it news, whatever they want to, but it's what their agenda is. And they just keep loading it up on you and loading it up on you. And the culture around us begins to absorb it. And then that comes back at you as well. And that's not the way we operate. So he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. I love that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look, he that is spiritual judges all things. Now, who's he that's spiritual? The born again you. Right? The one who's spiritually alive. It's the spirit man, the human spirit on the inside of you. That's spiritual. Mm -hmm. And he judges all things. Mm -hmm. But your spirit is judged by no man. Mm -hmm. Men may judge your actions. Yeah. And believe me, they will. We judge our own. We get guilty consciences and we feel bad and all that. But they can judge your actions, but they can't judge your spirit. Only God can do that, and God has judged you righteous. That's, the, that's another part of this gulf. They look at you and they say, well, he's not perfect. I mean, I see he did this. He got mad. I heard him cussing at the lawnmower the other day. or something. You know, who knows what? But they, they, they can judge my actions. But God's not as interested in my actions as he is in my beliefs. And my belief is by the Spirit. So they can judge how I behave. That's fine. Let them judge all they want to. I could care less. Get in line. But they cannot judge my spirit because no. God has already declared it yes. perfect, righteous yes. in Him. That's the, that's the liberty that we have. Even when we screw up in the natural, God is still declaring us righteous because yes. the only way He connects with us is by the Spirit. Yes. And He made us spiritually alive so that we could have that connection and not be bound to the natural. Right. Not be bound to our flesh. Not be bound to our failures and our shortcomings. Yes. But to His glory. Yes. Verse 16. Am I keeping you awake, honey? <laughs> For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Yes. Yes. So how does that work? It works through the word of God and the human spirit. God's spirit bears witness with our spirit. When our spirit and God's spirit are in unity... We have, again, the access to all truth. The access to all knowledge. Luke 12, 31 through 34. See, it really is a question of us having all this at our disposal and not using it. Mm -hmm. trying, to, trying to fix up the five senses yeah. rather than just recognizing them for what they are, right. weak, human, yep. and focusing on the spirit, the God part of us, right. that cannot fail, no. that will always be victorious, yes. that will always be an overcomer, Peter. Yes. Can't do anything else. Right. But you're absolutely right, Pete. You've got to keep telling yourself this because everything else in the world, including your own conscience, will tell you the opposite of that. So we have to trust in something. And the only thing that we can trust in is the Word of God. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. 
Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. We don't have to be afraid that we're not going to get it. That's what he wants to do. That's what gives him pleasure is to give us the kingdom. Sell that you have. Give alms or give to the charities. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now, so your treasure is in your heart. Look at verse 35. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. Now he's talking to Christians, right? So what he's saying is, our loins are to be girded with what? Truth. It tells us. Yeah. Ephesians 4, I think it is, or 6, whatever it is. Anyway, in Ephesians, it tells us your loins girded about with truth. The Word of God is the truth that we are to be girded with. Yes. Amen? And the lights he's referring to is our spirits. He enlightens us, right? Yeah. He gives us a spirit, the spirit of God, the spirit of life, the spirit of light. Amen. Let your loins be girded about with truth mm -hmm. and your spirits awakened or alive, lit up, yes. aware. Amen. God's word will enlighten you. Amen. It will enlighten you to the wisdom of God to the mind and the direction of the Spirit of God. That's why when we read this and we'll find all of a sudden we'll come across some go, oh my God, the lights went off. You know, I mean, all of a sudden you got illumination. You got revelation. Yep. That comes by the Spirit of God to your spirit. That's the treasure. Yes. That where everything comes out of that. Seek first this yes. and everything else is added to you. Yes. This is the means by which we have access to all of the promises of God, to all of the blessings of God, yes. to all the treasure. Praise God. The Word of God, you can say it this way, the Word of God is the fuel for the light. It's what keeps it burning. I mean, you think of Hanukkah, and they had the candles, and they lit the candle, and that, during that time, uh, uh, there was a great rebellion. The Jews were being slaughtered and everything, and they couldn't. They were trying to uh, purify the temple so they could have sacrificial worship again. And they come back, and they didn't have oil for the candles, for the for the menorah. They lit it, and it burnt for that entire period of time, which is what we now call Hanukkah, which is God kept the lights going when there was nothing there to support the lights except God Himself. Yeah. God will keep our light burning even when we don't do anything to help it. Right. It just doesn't give us, it, there's no value to it. Mm -hmm. Because he gives us that light so that we can operate the way God operates, by faith in the Word. That's how it produces, that's how it does everything. And it has to be done by the Spirit. That's the treasure, that's where we have this blessing, this treasure of yes. all that God has for us is in our spirit man. Yes. And he has lit, lit it up. Yes. I remember Suzanne sharing you know, the room, the closed room, and not wanting to go there, and oh God, don't go in. He knows it all. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's telling us, look, I've cleaned it up. It's all cleaned up. It's, look, it's, you can use it for anything now. It's great, right? And we're still thinking, oh, but that time in 98, you know, and that old, old over there in 2003, you know, and God's saying, please, yes. you're boring me. Yes. I don't know anything about this stuff. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Proverbs uh, 13, verse 9. I want, to I'm show, I'm, I want to show you what God is showing me where we're at right now. Yep. Praise the Lord. And where we're headed. Yes. The light of the righteous rejoiceth, yes. but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. The more light you have, the more light you get. Right? The more revelation you have, the more revelation He can give you. Yep. you got to start somewhere. But they, without revelation, their light goes out altogether because there's nothing to feed it. There's no Holy Spirit there. There's no Word of God to sustain them. As the wicked come closer to the end, and they continue to refuse the light of the Word, even what little bit of light they have will go out. What little bit they've heard from others, what little bit they've received from other people, it'll even go out. They'll be without any light whatsoever. Look at Proverbs 24, verse 20. Uh, 
you know, I've talked about this before, but it just, it still amazes me. When we, those of us my age and older, when we were young growing up, and, and some others as well, everything validated the Word of God. Not, not, not necessarily intentionally, it like, wasn't like every show was a, a Christian broadcasting, because there wasn't any Christian broadcasting for the most part. There was Bishop Sheen and somebody else, I don't remember who the others were a few times back there, Billy Graham once in a while you might see. But the deal was, God was trying to show us something that there was a, as, as life goes on, as the United States, other countries, all, give in a little bit here to the enemy, he's never satisfied with a little bit. He always wants a little bit more and a little bit more. So when we were kids, Lone Ranger, they actually talked about God. They actually talked about praying for one another. Roy Rogers, uh, Lone Ranger, Gene Autry, I mean, all of these Westerns that we used to watch as kids, they all had Christian values. Yes. Good guys had the white hats. Yes. You know, bad guys, evil, darkness, black hat. Yes. I mean, it was, it was subliminal, but it was still there. And even if we didn't understand it from teaching in Sunday school, it was still showing us there's good and there's evil. And, there's, and it's not a fine line. It's clearly divided. Yes. And everything that we did, we'd go to school, pledge allegiance yep. to the flag, United States of America, yep. right? Teachers would actually pray with us. I had a third grade teacher, uh, Mrs. White, and she'd have us come over. She lived in an apartment over on Main Street, which was just a couple of blocks from where I lived. And she'd have us kids come over there and get, d just give us little math things and st during the summertime when there wasn't school. And she'd always read a scripture. Always read a scripture. My next door neighbor, Pauline Clark, her son and I were buddies. We ran around, played sports together and stuff. We usually walked to school together. Every time I'd go over there in the morning to get him, she'd pray for us. God, watch over these boys today. Keep them from trouble. Yeah. It was annoying. I mean, as a kid, I just wanted to get out of there. I wanted to get to Ma Bowman's and get a you know, big bazooka bubblegum or something <laughs> on the way to school. But I realized as I got older how much those prayers yeah. really meant. Yeah. People like that in our lives, that was just normal. Today, you'd be scared to death to do that to a neighbor kid. They're liable to sue you take you to court. You know, I'd do it anyway, but I'm just saying, yeah. you know, that's the difference in the world that we live in today than what it was when we were kids. There isn't anything there to substantiate or validate yeah. the truth of God's Word in society anymore. Right. It's in individuals, but not in the culture. No. no matter how much we try to talk about being a Christian culture, it's just not. No. It's become totally divided between good and evil, yeah. between light and darkness. Yeah. Proverbs 4, 18. Candle of the wicked will be put out. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more under the perfect day. The closer we get to Jesus, the day star, the lighter it gets, the brighter it gets for us. And we cannot let the fear mongering and the threats of the enemy and politicians or whoever else is out there to let us be to cause us to be intimidated right. I'm just saying man I can hardly see you're getting dimmer and dimmer yep. and the light here is getting brighter and brighter It's making it easier to tell yes. who is and who is not yes. for us oh, yes. for this nation and for our God oh, yes. praise the Lord path of the just all right it's getting brighter, folks. Yep. Look at uh, Proverbs 11 and verse 8. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked comes in his stead. What you meant for evil, yes. God's going to give it good. Yep. The evil will come back on you. Hey, I'm telling you, this is what the Scripture says. Just watch. Just watch. Right. Looks like it, they're going to get us. They're going to ruin everything. They're going to screw up. And I'm telling you, no, the light's going to shine brighter for the people who have faith in God, and their lights are going to go out. They're gonna, it's getting darker and darker because without God, there is no light. They're, they're living off of the reflection of Christianity. They're living off of the light of those that are around them. Amen. I'm believing in the days to come the wicked are going to become more and more confused yes. 
They're going to lose what little insight that they have in this world system. But the righteous are going to grow in wisdom and understanding. Yes. We're going to be led in paths of light. Yes. Amen. Those that are not enlightened by the light of life are going to stumble in the darkness. It's the darkness that will bring fear on mankind. We have nothing to fear. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we've got nothing to fear. And we can be such a miracle blessing to those who are in darkness. We're the only way out. Yep. We're the only avenue of escape. Yep. And he will light the path. The Holy Spirit has to move on people. How does the Holy Spirit do it? He has to do it from our spirit. Yep. Yep. That's why what Tim was saying is so, so true. It, it's so easy to get angry with people. Especially now, we're frustrated anyway. You know, we already got a lot of angst and stuff going on. And people can just annoy you and get on your bad side really quick, you know. And it's just hard to not react. Which is why it's so important that we, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you know the old cliche, but sometimes it's better to be quiet and thought stupid rather than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Praise yeah. God. Praise God. Proverbs 10, 24. I'm about done here. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 10, 24. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Yeah. Worst thing they're fearing is just exactly what they're going to get. Yeah. But what are we going to get? The desire yes. of our hearts. Yes. Praise God. Proverbs 11, 3. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of the transgressors shall destroy them. We don't have to do a thing, folks. The battle is not ours. The battle is God's. Their own behaviors will destroy them. Their own choices, their own rejections, their own hatred will consume them. But it's not going to come nigh my house or my dwelling. Amen? Upright will be guided. The integrity of the upright, or the honesty is what he's yes. talking about. Belief in this word is what's going to guide us. Yes. Fear has no power over us. No. Fear not. Fear not. 365 or 66 times in the Bible, yes. he, he used that. Fear not. There's, there's a reason to not fear every single day, and it's him. It's Jesus. Right. Praise the Lord. So it's clear that there's no hope for those who don't have the light of life. You must be born again. You must receive the light of this world. You must become a new creation in Christ, a spirit being, a living spirit in a body. And then God's spirit can bear witness with your spirit. Let's read this and we'll close with this. Proverbs 4, 18 through 23. He is the life and the light that this world is looking for. The true light. The light that lights up every man. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more under the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. That's why I don't trust them trying to fix stuff. They don't even know what's broke. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear to my sayings. Mm -hmm. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Yep. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Yes. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Yep. Yeah. Out of your spirit yes. are the issues of life. Everything that we have need of, yes. God has provided. Yes. And it's all right here in our spirit. Praise the Lord. He's the true light. The light that lights up every man. We need to see people receive Jesus. Receive the light. We offer it to him. We can't make him take it. We can't force feed him. But we can share. 
We can share the Word of God. And that Word is what will get into them. That's a seed that can create a life. Just like the seed of God created Jesus in a virgin, in a natural woman. And God can do it. And He has done it over and over and over. And He'll continue to do it until the lights go out. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Amen. So fear not. Fear not. The light is going to shine brighter and brighter. We're going to see it ourselves and experience the blessings of God in the midst of the chaos around us. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Praise God. Yes, Ron. Thank you, Father. Some say, well, Right. But if you're in God, you're on His side. Yes. You could be a Republican or you could be a Absolutely. Republican. You, if you're in Christ, you're on His side. Yes. That's, That's why I said this, isn't, this has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with good and evil, yep. light and dark. And God will use, the, the enemy will use everything to create division, whether it's race, whether it's religion, whether it's politics, anything to create strife. Because yeah. where there's strife, there's every evil work. There's jealousy yeah. and every evil work. Yeah. We've got to love the unlovable. We've got to be able to do the best we can to be like Jesus. So that when we are persecuted, we can say, truly, Father, forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. They have no clue. And when Jesus spoke that, that was true of everybody on earth. Yeah. Nobody had been born again yet. He was the only man to come without sin. That's what he was trying to share with those people even to the very end. Father, don't hold this against them. They're still dead. Give them a chance to receive the spirit of light and life. We're going to realize now, you know, we pray that prayer. Father, you know, it's written in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Right. It's coming. Yeah. I yeah. realize it, but it, that's the reason why everything is going bad because the kingdom is coming through the atmosphere and it's pushing all yep. the powers of darkness down. And so when you see this, look up for your redemption. What does he say? Thy will be done yes. on earth as it is in heaven. This is his will. And it's settled in heaven. Oh, yes. And we're seeing it oh, yes. pressing into this realm. Yes. And it will be done on earth yes. as it is in heaven before this is all said and done. Jesus. That's something to look forward to, folks. Oh, yes. That is light in the midst of darkness. Yes. And we're a privileged generation yes. to be able to be a part of this, to experience it and to see it. To be able to exercise real faith in Almighty God and see it yes. come to pass in our lives, in the lives of our family members, loved ones, friends, and all around the world. Amen. Yes. He's going to shine bright. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let your light shine. God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here. Have a great week. See you next week.